Hello, Maximizers. Uh, so today is August uh, 23rd and is our monthly uh, group call. And we have uh, Kathy Mila. Is it Mila? I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. Kathy Mila, who uh, graduated from the course uh, this past uh, June. She took a June course. So in July, she graduated from the course. And I want to take this opportunity since, you know, I know we're still in the summer and some people are busy and we're having like a group call one-on-one. -on -one. I, we just had a, a brief chat and I thought that this would be beneficial for everybody. Um, there, and there's a couple of people, uh, her, herself included, that are just making waves of after the course. And I wanna use this opportunity to encourage everybody to show everybody how the progress continues after the course. How can you also discover and fine tune what you did um, by taking, you know, like I always say, by taking massive action, right? And Kathy, I've been following her on Facebook. Um, she's been, you know, active in the membership and I want to, and she has reached out to me, which is another thing that I want to encourage. As long as you're part of this membership, I love people that are proactive you have something that you want me to review send it to me i if i'll be completely honest with you if i don't have the time to review it right there i'll give you a timeline when i can review it she's been sending me her proposals and thanks to her and her action and her contribution the um the video for this month is going to be about building proposals which is something that i put on the membership and people say that they wanted to hear more and she because she's been proactive she has given me all the material that i need to Put together the video and the work that we have done together from taking her proposal from point a to point b and now that's going to serve everybody and now we're like in this conversation of where she is right now and i felt that it was important to record this call for the for the course for everybody so you can see how she exit how she entered the course how she exited the course, right? Like a lot of the work was done, but it wasn't a hundred percent perfect. And how she just took that idea and just continued, even if it wasn't perfect, because as I always say, you're gonna know where you are and what you need when you get in contact with the customer. And that's what she's doing. So I'm gonna let her explain us, first of all, um, a little bit of how what was the concept of the audience and the idea that she wanted to develop when she entered the course and then she had a awesome pretty much perfect description of the problem that she solved and the audience that she serves which i know is something that we all struggle when we come into the course and then it's like week three and week four and we're still defining it and this is a perfect example of how you can perfectly define it once you come out of the course and just take action on what you built, which is she hasn't stopped like since she started in June and she hasn't stopped doing it. So I'm going to let her tell us how she started, what she's doing right now and how that has to help her to discover this perfect audience description. And then for her to give us a description, which is it's a little long, but it works for her and, and she feels close to it. And I'm going to ask her to read it slowly, uh, slowly because it's very I think every single word of it is important. So Kathy, why don't you tell us about what, where you were and, and where you are right now? Um, when I first started, I, I've known for a little while, I've been coaching women for a while and I'm very comfortable coaching women. And I have worked with men a lot um, in a stressful situation and you know, like what kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching, not really as a professional coach that I am now, but more in the, in the healthcare arena that I was in before. And um, I was kind of ignoring the voice um, that was on my heart to coach men because I felt like I women, it's easy for me. So I'm very comfortable. And I still have a lot of women that, you know, connect with me and go, you know, you should talk to women. And yeah, I could do that. But this was placed in my heart to coach men. And it was scary. And I was uncomfortable. I couldn't figure out like how I approached them. And one on one, I'm great, but like really getting it kind of solid. Um, so that's part of why I took your course because I, want to continue to put events together, especially online. And I want events for men and I want them to come. And I also have also discovered that part of my marketing will be marketing to the women that influence them and that support them because men tend to be drawn to this kind of work through their women. And um, I actually had a man tell me that I had him on my show and, um, and, and that was like a, a really green light for him. Like, Oh, I haven't been back. I haven't been maximizing that piece. So it's learning how to market to their women as well. 
Um, but what I know to be true for me is that I work with men who are highly successful. They're keenly focused on making money and yet they are not where they want to be financially. And I show them how to see the obstacles in front of them, get clear on their path and create an action plan that impacts their performance and results. That's amazing. That's a really very narrow uh, description, very specific. And I want to take, for those that didn't take the course with you that we, we watch in this video, I want to give them a little overview because I remember, it, Kathy's example is so great because she, you know, she takes this course to dwell into a completely new market. And she wanted the guidance and she wanted the staff and know like, I know I want to serve men, but I don't know how to go about it. And I have always served women. And I have seen, like, I, there's another um, member that also wanted to do the same thing. And Kathy's a great example of how, how you get there, right? So she didn't re really know how it was going to get there, but she felt this pull to do this, right? And when we started, I remember the first time I asked you, who's the audience that you're going to serve? And she, her first thing was like, stress men. And I'm like, boy, Kathy, that's a big group. Like I think every man as every woman is stressed in some shape or form. So that's a big pool. So we need to narrow that. And now she's coming from a stressed man and, and her background in, she's a, uh, her background is in, in nursing, right? So she, she told me this whole story about like how she's been able to be supportive to men in very vulnerable situations. Like she deals in the environment where she's dealing with, with men that are about to lose a loved one or have to make like difficult decisions. And she's been able to help them in their most vulnerable time when they're the ones that are supposed to be strong. They are the ones who be supported to be like holding it together for the family and they're the most vulnerable moment, which is something that they are not, it's not easy for them to express. Or, or recognize or even admit. So when we did the questions, and I hope this is helpful for everybody if you're still working on your audience, when we did the questions, she was this right away pointing like, oh, I wanna work, I wanna work with this like professional man that is stressed. And I was like, Kathy, let's look at your what? Let's look at, the, at your background and the, the kind of men that you have helped. What is it that they have in common? And she went ahead on week three and did her interviews and all that. And what we found was like more than professional men, which is something that she was feeling that she wanted to do, but she didn't know where to find them. It's men that are in this position where they need to be the guideline for everybody. And, and yet they have no support in their most vulnerable time, right? So we look into her background and the kind of people that she's been able to uh, help in the past. And I think that helped a lot into the going from just this generic, stressful professional men to this beautiful description that she's given us that is a lot more tangible. And tell us how this, this being closer to this uh, market, Kathy, has helped you in launching the initiative that you're doing now on Facebook, your, um, am I saying it right? Lighthouse for Men? A lighthouse for Men. Tell um, us about that. I mean, I did some market research back in the beginning of the year and called a lot of um, some men that I know and men that I had connected with and had specific questions. And what I found, and so I think that that's a really good place if you're trying to figure out your market is to do some of those kind of calls so that you can get clear on the kind of what are, what's their pain point? Because as a woman, I know women's pain points generally, and I know men's pain points, but to put it into their language was my challenge. And, you know, men are very focused on money. They, every single guy I talked to, like that was his stress. Money, you know, having enough money for their kids in the college, having enough money for retirement. Um, it's not that they weren't successful. These are all successful guys, but money still played a big part of it. And so how could I bring, and I played around with it a little bit. I did some different videos. Um, and, I've, I, and I have a course that I'm certified and trained in. It's called Blueprint for Success. And I've spoken with the person that designed that. And, you know, that's where I'm putting my focus is on that because it's about all the things that I bring to the table, which is purpose. And what is your purpose? And what is your vision in life? And what are you passionate about? And what gets you motivated? And then actually having a plan. And I think the plan part is what intrigues guys to actually have like a written plan of what's actionable is important and I know that that's the piece that I feel that is missing for a lot of us there's and you bring that to the table great because there's the knowing and then there's the doing and 
we can know a lot of stuff, but until we put it into action and really learn and grow from the action part. And, you know, I think a lot of us are trying to be perfectionists too. And I've been like that. I've let go of that. Like just get out there and do something and get my message out there and then I can refine it. So part of that has started. I started about a month ago with um, a program on Wednesdays, a lighthouse for men, which is geared for men and just bringing, interviewing people that I know that uh, men's health, um, we can talk about money. We can talk about purpose, talk, you know, I'm just bringing different people on that want to talk about men and how to help men be the best version of themselves. And it's been fun. And there's been a couple times I, you know, that you have to be ready to, to change it up. Um, the other day, I, I knew this, this guy that I was having on, um, I'll have him on again, but I knew he was having a personal situation with a family member that, that might have escalated to where he couldn't be on. So a little voice in my head said, Tuesday, just be prepared. And I really wasn't super prepared, like anything, anything written. And I, he was not able to come on. And I just got on and did a, a, a you know, conversation about a little bit about perfectionism, talking about, because I think a lot of us, you know, lean towards that. So it's being consistent in that and getting on and posting and putting myself out there. And there's a lot of men that I do know and a lot of women that I do know that, that are not on social media. So that's my next. Um, feel is to get into talking to either some companies about doing work with them because I do some corporate training and keynote speech speaking and to um, just get out there and reach people where they're at. Um, Cause not, you know, I know that not everyone's on social media. I prefer if I could just do social media cause it's easy and it works for me. And I also know not everybody's there. So I'm going to start reaching, reaching out in another way. Um, but getting but I, wanna, but I wanna give you some feedback on that. There's two things that I wanna highlight. I wanna highlight that you started doing Lighthouse for Men with a rougher concept of the clear concept that you have right now of your audience, but you use what you learned at the course, yes. which was taking action and going from like a very wide um, audience to a more limited audience. And you said, okay, it's not just a stress men, it's men that, you know, um, are worried about money and it's been like you define 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 it you took the concept even if it wasn't perfect like you're saying and you just went for it and with what we developed which is like okay this this man they are the guides and they need something they yet they're the pillar of the family and they need guidance and they get guidance i remember talking to you about it that is not emasculating so you created this very soft approach called Life House for Men. And even if it wasn't perfect, even if you didn't, you didn't have all the words that you have right now about your audience, you went on Facebook and you did it. And the other thing that I want to highlight, you've been doing it very consistently. The third thing that I will want to highlight and overcome experiences like the one that you just described on which you weren't like 100% prepared, but you already had the commitment to do it. So you went ahead and did it, right? For whoever was watching. And then the third thing that I want to highlight is that before we started recording, you told me that you just, uh, through your network and through doing, doing the, the thing that you committed to do, which is to show, uh, somebody connected you with this man that has things in common with your audience, and now he's going to be in your show next week, and you're going to be in his show. So I want to highlight that because uh, a lot of you, have been asking me about, you know, a going deeper into like partnerships. There you go. That's the example. She started, it's harder to get partners or identify what, who's gonna be your right partners if you're not doing the thing. So Kathy, I wanted to highlight her today because even though it wasn't perfect, even though it wasn't finished, she had enough to get her started, did the show, she had the title, she had the target, when did the show and that but while doing the show found this partner which is going back to the class is now not only a content partner like somebody that can contribute content so she doesn't have to create all the content herself but most importantly now is a marketing partner because by doing that exchange on which like you're in my show and i put you to my audience and i am in yours and you put me through yours she's going to be able to reach people that she will normally wouldn't reach. I want to contribute to that idea. Once she does this, as a good student that she is, she knows that everybody that will uh, comment on that or share it or like it 
she is going to, that's her opportunity to PM these people and inbox on them and start an engagement and conversation. And if she's following what, I, what we learn in the class, she's going to try to reach at least three of those people a week in each body that even, even just likes her show. She's going to go and PM them. And I want to talk a little bit about the outcome of all these efforts. Kathy shared with me before some of you came into the call that she now has two clients. She now has two male clients, which is, you know, the audience that she wanted to break with this uh, course. She has two male clients and she's concentrating in promoting her Blueprint for Success program, which is the one that she's um, is certified to, to teach. But she's not now coming from zero. She has two clients already that she's coaching um, that are men, which is you know, out of this brand new audience. So I wanted to use, and I, and I wanted to talk to everybody that is down the line. Now it's not, no longer a one-on-one. We have three more people on the line. Yeah. Um, to see like where you are and support you and help you in, in that. But I wanted to start with Kathy because I am being, not only her, there's, there's other people too that I, I'm going to be highlighting um, that I'm floored about. Like they graduated and they just took the bull by the horns and they started doing things and they're getting clients and they're doing things. Even if I love what you said about that, Kathy, even if they're not perfect, you did not have the audience nailed down. Like you just described when we stopped in July, you, you had a really pretty good idea. And then you started the show and she's like, Oh my gosh, she's not kidding. She started, she just started the show and I've been watching, I've been, I've been watching the recordings and I, and I see now that that has, I want to acknowledge your progress that it has getting you to your first partner. So obviously if, if you need uh, more guidance and more support into how to um, explode this partnership, obviously reach out. But the first thing that I have to tell you is uh, obviously market it when you're going to, when he's going to be in your show, which I, I know you're already doing and take advantage of every person that is going to come cross crossing over his platform and engage them into a conversation give yourself a goal which is you know what i do and share with you in the class of at least three a week on which you're going to go and spend some time sending them a private message so you can bring them to your network how do you, what do i mean by that your goal has to be to get them out of facebook why because while while somebody from his network right a comments or likes the show or whatever it is, whatever that you are going to talk about, there's still his audience. So when you get purpose for you to engage in that private message conversation is not to sell them anything is to create rapport and get their email. So you can, so they now cross, they don't cross to your network until you get their email. As long as they're in Facebook, they're still theirs, right? So do propose yourself that that's going to be your goal, that you're going to do this show with the intention to reach out to more men that he's having this audience. And you generously, by in the other hand, also, when he comes to your show, you put the light on him. Because the more you put the light on him, the more people from his audience could cross over like yours. So you both will benefit. So congratulations on everything that you're doing. Thank you for sharing. And... I'm very appreciative of Kathy because she's been very proactive. And as I said before, some of you jump in the call, thanks to her being proactive and keep sending me her proposals for me to review, uh, even after the course was over. Now we have enough material to present uh, a video, which is going to be the August video on how to present a proposal in a way that will get you a client in a way that is interactive. And you're going to be able to see Kathy generously wants to share this with the group to see like her first proposal, how it was or how we evolve it to the second draft and how we evolve it to the draft that she's actually going to present live to try to nail this corporate client. Right. So she, she's going to give us that and I'm going to explain the whole process and how we, how, how is the way that I present a proposal, especially for those who want to go after corporate for like corporate trainings, which is what she's trying to do. Uh, but I use that format even with one-on-one -on -one clients just to give me the opportunity to be ahead of the objection and give me the opportunity of them just not reading the proposal and filing it in some cabinet, but actually have the opportunity to get the client. So thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. And I do I want, want to say what you just yeah, said is, key, is getting ahead of those objections. I am finding that that is... Um, 
something to really be mindful of is getting ahead of those objections. And I want to thank you for the course because so much continues to evolve. You know, I go back and look at my notes periodically and look at things and, and um, yeah, I appreciate all your support. It's been great. And I appreciate that you're being such in action. Thank you for, for sharing with all of us. And uh, now that I'm back from this um, conference, uh, we're going to launch the two videos for this month. One is going to be based on Kathy's experience and the proposal. And the other one is about all the awesome things that I just learned about marketing and social media and this conference that I came, uh, that I shared with the current group yesterday. Um, so I decided to make a video for, for you guys that are, didn't get the benefit to get that extra information. Um, a little bit more on social media that I just learned this week. So I would love to hear from somebody else. This, this group call now has become, where are they now? <laughs> and if somebody would just want to share like the things that you're doing and how I can give you feedback on that and, and give you support on that. What are, what, anybody just, you know, raise your hand or put in the chat or whatever, open your line. Yeah. Becky, yes, I was Hi. hoping it would be you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, how are you? Um, so I, it took me a little while for everything to fall into place in my head. Um, and then as my ideas fit into Carla, what you had said, I was like, okay, now I get it. Um, and one of the things that I liked, you had said to have an event that has a, a price point that people can't say no to for them to kind of get to know you and then, you know, building that relationship. And one of the challenges I had in the past as well was I was trying to figure out if I wanted to serve men or women. And um, so what I'm doing, and it's, it's uh, launching actually through word of mouth before I've even put anything public. So I'm putting something up public today, but um, I have three calls that I'm going to be making um, for people that have told me they're interested. Uh, that one today and two next week, but I'm doing a, um, a very quick two week program, uh, reinvent your health, reinvent yourself. And this came about as I was thinking about everybody going back to school, you know, the kids are going back to school this time of year, people say, Oh, I'm going to get back in the routine, but are you getting back in the correct routine? So, you know, I'm addressing a lot of that. So I'm putting out um, information and then I'm going to do a video as well that kind of tells a little bit more about it. And it's a $39 price point, so easy and simple for people to sign up for. It's a two week virtual program, um, a lunch hour Tuesday and Thursday for two weeks in September. And then I have a women's retreat I'm doing at the end of September um, in Asheville. So that's my step up. So that's, what? yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, you know, already talking about that. And I also, uh, this week, got my behind out the door into a networking event and I have a speaking engagement that I'm um, uh, confirming the dates. I have to talk to the woman today via email and it's a business networking group that's here in Charleston and uh, getting my word out because people don't really know me here yet, but um, it, you know, it's just things are starting to organically happen. Part of it was I was traveling a lot in the summer and just had my, uh, one client in my program that I was finishing up and we both had to have a hiatus for traveling. So I had to, you know, come back and I'm like, you got to jump in. You got to like be on it. So I just sat and let myself be creative and like, what am I going to enjoy and have fun with? And then the biggest aha that I had was with the client that I was working with. I had, we talk about nutrition. I provide information. I do specific, um, personal, you know, analysis, but doing the hands on, uh, and it was virtual, the person's in California, but doing a, uh, cooking demonstration and food prep, she was blown away. So we, we put in another one before the end of her program. And she was like, this all makes sense now. And I always forget that people don't know what I know. Like I always think, Oh, everybody knows this. They're not going to think it's interesting or important. But she was like, no, this is like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, that's helped, you know, with the whole process of like, I feel like things are really falling into place. And, you know, I figure even with the virtual two week program, if I have a very small amount of people, I'm not spending anything. I'm not, you know, there's no, nothing going out, but I'm reaching new people and keeping myself in action in between that program and starting the, the new one. 
to, you know, keep that confidence and, and just my flow. So that's Absolutely. where I am. And I want to just like applaud you for being in action because I mean, that's what, that's what I, I admire about Kathy is that she just like went for it, like right after, I think it was like the week after the program was done. And I knew there was still, she, even though she made a ton of progress, there was a, still a couple of things that she didn't have like a hundred percent clear. And I was hoping that you would come on in the line because she just, she just said it, right? She said it, it, it wasn't perfect, but that didn't stop me. Right. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so I'm glad as you getting action is when things happen and and even like this conference that i just went it was a great reminder of which i encourage you all to do ask for what you want like i went to this conference with the intention of seeing how was the market because it's, it's a conference that i used to go at i has changed so just to see what is the market to, to see there was an opening for me to to speak and make the connections and all that and by the night before the closing Day, I went straight to the decision maker, which I found out while I was there, and I just happened to know, and I just went for it. I said, I want to speak to this conference next year. Who do I have to talk to? And he went and introduced me to the person that I had to talk to. I just asked for what I wanted, you know, regardless of thinking like, um, eh, you know, are they gonna are they gonna be interested? Are they gonna be there? I'm gonna let I'm gonna cross that bridge when I'm there. I just like right now, I just need to do the ask before the opportunity goes. So I, I congratulate you from doing that. And I think the virtual cooking demo is amazing. And, and I remember when we talk about in the program, when we talk about like food, uh, it was the same thing that you're saying now. So I'm happy that you live in it. You said, oh, I just assumed that they know. I was like, no, most people, that don't cook every day and that don't are not used to like be so rigid about their their food and, and just stuff we don't know what to do so if you're gonna you're willing to show us and more even more you're willing to show us virtually so i don't have to go anywhere i can watch it from my computer at home that's genius and the second thing that i wanted to say is i have a couple of things for you if you are doing a retreat in Asheville, it just happened that in the conference that I just went, I had spent a ton of time with the Asheville CBV, which can help you for free. I have all the information. I'll be happy to have oh, class. That's great. Okay. They, their job is to help you for free to find what you need because they don't collect any fee from you. They collect the fee from the venues or from the restaurants or from the places. Their job okay. is to put them on the map. And I actually, um, I met with all the CDVs because I want to offer this to, I want to have the information for when my clients ask me for retreats and stuff to, to do that. I want to have the contact. So I can pass you those contacts and for you to have oh, a conversation that great. with that. And I spend a lot of time with Asheville because Asheville, they're very eager for business and they sponsor a bunch of stuff in this conference okay. to get just to get us to know everything that they have available. So I just happy I have a brochure this big about Asheville. Yay, and her name is uh, Connie and she's a super nice lady and I'm sure she can help you out. So remind me of that. So I send you that information. Okay. Yes. Great. Remind Thank you. And then uh, the other thing that you mentioned, the, the retreat, you mentioned what else did you mention? Oh, the speaking thing. So the, mm -hmm. speaking, um, the speaking thing, uh, make sure that you go back into the Facebook group and watch the speaking um, video that I did. Okay. With the, uh, with, the, um, a, with the contact cards. If I, didn't, I don't remember if I actually post the contact card file. If I didn't, let me know and I can send it to you and also post it in the group for everybody because that video is about how I went to a market that I've never been, uh, how do I structure my presentation? There's a video with my presentation. So make sure that you watch it. And, and it was only a 15 minute, you probably have more time, but it will guide you into what were the points. I was very intentional on the explanation to explain what were the points that I was trying to hit to get the interest without selling because I wasn't allowed to sell. So without selling, how did I hit the pain points? How did I hit? So I put the video so you can watch it and then I explain it how, what was what I was trying to convey. So hopefully that's helpful for you as you put your presentation together. If you're not allowed mm -hmm. to sell or you don't want to look salesy, like what, how can you um, hit the points without trying to sell anything? So Yeah, she did say, you know, we don't, we don't allow somebody to sell. 
and you know and I quickly talked with her and reassured her that I could do that so yeah so so what I also talk about in that video is how I think that was last month video the month before I don't remember but I I look it up and I also talk about like how to build your contact card so it's a gift that will give you get you into a call on which in the call then you can sell right um it, yes. but, it, but it's, it's presented as a gift and I got 25 calls like that, doing that in a, in, a, in a stage that it was my first time and in a stage that I couldn't sell anything. So, okay. um, so make sure that you watch it. And if, you, if I didn't post a template, let me know and I'll send it to you and I'll put it in the group for everybody as well. But I am Great. happy to hear that you're doing things and things are happening. And remind me of those two things. That is what I, I, can, I feel that I can help you. And there's anything else, uh, feel free to send me a message. Okay, thank you. No, yeah. thank you. Awesome. Anybody else wants to share? Diana, you got you have big news. I know you have I, I you have big, big news. I do. Hold on. I just dropped my pen. Oh gosh. Um I took I finished my second business with a soul mastermind at the beginning of August. So I'm taking a hiatus for a couple months just to prepare my big move. I'm moving from Miami, Florida to New Jersey, my home state. Whoa. Where in New Jersey? And, uh, this is something. That, sorry? Where in New Jersey? Central Jersey. Okay. All right. Water, Flemington, in the mountains where I... I, I regain all my, my energy. So that's where I'm going. Uh, actually, we're closing. We sold the home. We're closing next Thursday. Mm. Moving truck is coming in to pick up everything on Wednesday. So we are ready to roll. This Wednesday? This coming Wednesday? This coming oh, my God. Wow. So I'm in the middle of a sale of this home, in the middle of a purchase of another one enrolling people into his schools shifting moving companies so all of this has been happening for the last two months actually in a month and a half and it was a big huge um lesson in surrendering because many of the things i didn't know how it was going to fall into place and it was not that it was not planned we just had the big picture, but it was allowing ourselves just to to take one step and see the path just forming ahead of us for the next step. So it was a very incredible journey of surrendering and trusting the process without trying to control the outcome. And that was a big, huge, amazing miracles happened. So that's what's going on. And... Um, I'm starting again the business with a soul in October and I have a retreat for the first week of November with a partner here in Miami. It's a little, it's glamping. It's going to be. Wow. In Miami, you can do that in Miami. Where? By homestead. So it's, oh. it's the, the healing and it's a whole process of, and this is something that I experience. I experience things first and then I offer because I want to make sure that I did the job. And so we are going in. Many of the women store many of the fears, guilt, loss in our wombs. And we don't give them the, the love and care and kindness that we deserve. So we're doing a womb healing and feminine rebirth. It's going to be open for about 20 women. It's absolutely phenomenal i can't wait i already experienced it and it's mind-blowing and also have a retreat which is going to be a v live fest in costa rica also partnering with my spiritual teacher menachi from india and we have one of the gurus one of the big big teachers of the small meditation and joke coming from india as well so this is this is something that we're expanding. It's going to happen between February and March. So big things cooking big in the things background. Okay. I, and I wanted to 
I'm, I'm assuming that comes from there because obviously I follow you in social media and I see that a, you are meeting, I, I know, I recognize some faces, right? Like Andreina, but you have this like secret society now of women. And, and this is, I just, I'm just, I'm just highlighting this because this is the woman back in, you were in my February course. So this is the woman like back in January, 2018, told me, no, I'm sorry, January 2019, told me nobody in Miami wants to do the work. There's nobody, Carla, there's nobody. I'm going to have to leave, but well, you're leaving anyway, but it's like, I'm going to have to leave here because there's nobody, there's no woman, no woman in Miami that is interested in going deeper into their soul and do the work. And now I see her in all these secret societies having fun with like kumbayas and like fire. And I'm like, I thought there was no woman in Miami that wanted to do that, right? And you have like your whole like, and it's not like two or three people, like this thing looks crowded. It's not, but you found your audience, you found your people and, uh, and you were saying that, and I was like, I remember, and obviously Diana knows about this work a lot more than I do. But my answer was like, Diana, that's impossible. It's impossible that there's no woman in Miami that wants to do this. You, we're just, it's funny because I, I, I know that the biggest outcome for you, the course was to, um, to discover that it was just the way, the language that you were using to communicate and found these people, it, it was just a little bit you know, complicated. And when you simplify it, the people start coming out of the woodworks. And now you have this secret, not so secret, because I see it on Facebook, society of women that are into the same things that you're into, and that they're opening this mirage of opportunities for you to serve the people that you meant to serve, just by you know, changing the language, changing the message, identifying and going laser focus on the audience that you were meant to, um, to serve and you were meant to surround yourself with. And I want to take even a step further because we attract and we manifest what we attract that get you, got you into your next step, which was leaving Miami against all odds and finding the place that now is going to be your headquarters, right? Because you're literally just serve the world because I remember getting your clients from Europe while we were still on the course selling to people in Europe. So you are a citizen of the world. You have clients everywhere, but now you're moving your headquarters to a place that feels more authentic to you. But you open these opportunities. You open all these opportunities by just taking that, surrendering and taking that out of your mind and doing the work and saying, I'm going to focus on this thing. I'm going to find this woman. Then you found them and look at you now. Now you have retreats galore, retreat here and retreat there and glamping. Oh my, I didn't even know you could do glamping in Homestead. You're going to have to hook me up with that information because I want to do that. <laughs> That's awesome. It's incredible when we get out of our way. When, when we completely 100% get out of our way. And, 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 those, and those blocks that we have in our mind. It's, it's, it's amazing. If, if I tell you all the small details that have been happening, even just with the move, you will be like, what? I, what? You, you, you're not worried? You're not freaking out? <laughs> because once you trust fully, fully, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you, just fully, 100% without a shadow of a, of a doubt, everything starts happening for you and with you and the people that wants to be there, wants to support you. And it, it just starts coming from the woodwork and like, boom, oh my God, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's take this to the next level. And, um, and it's just beautiful to watch. It's just beautiful to just sit, take action, because obviously we need to take action. Trusting fully in our abilities, in our faith, in our skills, in our and just going forward, full force, and um, and just seeing the miracles happening in front of you. So it's it's amazing. I'm really, really exciting for excited for what's to come. Well, congratulations on the move, and uh, I won't even say that I will miss you because I have I first of all I follow all of you. 
all my clients, I follow all of you in, in social media. And, and there's a couple of things that I learned in this conference or, or that I was reminded of in this conference and they all proving truth by talking to you, right? First of all, the things don't happen <laughs> if they don't happen in social media. Because the reason I know what all of you are doing is because you're posting it. And I want to encourage you to keep doing that because that's how we are attracting those yellows, you know, the, our yellow our audience. We're attracting it by then saying, oh, my God, Diana is doing this and Diana is all about this. Maybe I should talk to Diana, right? All those people that maybe you contacted in the past and you had conversations and they weren't sure they were ready to do, you know, what you do, Diana, or to do what Kathy does, or to do what Becky does. The more we open it to the world and show them the things that you're doing, it, showing them that we're doing it, even if they didn't sign up that moment, that we're still doing it, and that our message, like the same things that we talk about in the course, guys, is just proving truth, right? That we, we're consistency, we're sending, it's not that you were doing one thing, Diana, and now three months later that you just switch gears. No, no, no. This is the 10th level of the things that you were build, building back in February. So it, so your message didn't change because, not because you thought there wasn't enough people to do it, you kept going and then you found the people and it grew. That's the lesson that I'm seeing here. What I'm seeing here is that you kept consistent, you kept in the problem that you solved, you kept going deeper and then the people, like you just said, it started coming out of the woodworks, right? Your people. And I love that you guys have been so proactive in social media because I know what you're doing. I mean, we haven't talked in a while and I know what you're doing because you're putting it out there. And I got this from a millennial this week, which know of social media way more than everybody in this call. And they say, um, if it didn't happen in, on social media, it didn't happen. And for you to be consistent and attract the people, your supporters, your clients, your followers, you need to keep putting it out there because it shows them, look, maybe you weren't ready at that moment, but it still happened. And then it get those yellow people thinking that we're like in the fence, maybe I should do it. Maybe she was right. She's having what I want. So congratulations on doing that because I'm convinced that's what's also attracting all your results and attracting that there's the glamping and the retreat in Costa Rica, which I know has been on your mind for a while. And the, um, and the, you know, the move. So a couple of lessons, and I was putting it in the chat, you know, do things like Kathy said, do things even if you're not ready, do things even if they're not perfect, because as you go into the action, they will become more and more perfect, right? Um, the other thing was um, you attract, you manifest what you're attracting, which is, you know, what Diana is saying. And a be involved, be, be proactive, like look at Becky. Becky. Becky has all these things that is going on for her by her taking the action, coming to the call and sharing. I was like, Becky, I have stuff for you. I have, that's not coincidence. Why did I meet with the people from Asheville more than I met with everybody else? Because I was meant to give that information to her. So by her saying, I'm gonna make the time to show up um, and share this thing, now she has a resource. So, um, so I, there's so many lessons in this call, right? Like do the things, even if they're not perfect, post and share because your people will show up and, you know, trust the process and surrender and all the things that, that, um, uh, that Diana is saying, and there is people for you. There's people for all of us. I, 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 I have shared this example of you, Diana, with other groups because I laugh because I believe with every fiber of my being that you were wrong. And I, and I believe it. I was like, there's no way. I didn't understand 100% what you did, but I knew there was people for you. So I am so glad to see. I'm so happy to see that everything is going well for you. And please go to New Jersey, do your thing, but keep coming back to the call. Uh, we can all support each other, learn from each other. A, like I shared before, Kathy challenged me with like these proposals, corporate proposals. So she said, Carla, take a look. Let me, let me know what you think. And as I was helping her, I was like, this is going to help everybody. Do you mind if we do a video about this? She's like, go ahead. So keep sharing, keep coming to the call because as you grow, it was, it's going to help everybody in the, in the group to grow as, as well. And I want to add something about consistency with social media. Mm -hmm. 
been on social media for what over 10 years and the people that have followed me for all that long now they see a huge shift within the last year or so and they're becoming curious like what the hell are you doing yeah what is it that you're doing i want to know in just messages popping on on messenger saying hmm i want to i want to know what you think about this and asking me even for for advice on other retreats that pretty much align to what i do too and um it, it is the trust, is it, it is the life, trust, and respect factor that you build up over time. But you can only do that with consistency on social media. And people seeing your evolution and your transformation as you go, as you step forward. And, and, and you know, sometimes, sometimes I don't feel like posting and I don't post if I really don't feel it in my core. If it's not moving me, if it's not making me cry, I don't post. But if, if I feel feel it even if it's a long big ass novel i'll post it because it's moving me and that's what people is attracted to so. and and yeah everything that you said is like you know i know everybody in this group have taken the course so it goes back to that uh week three on which is like as long as your message is consistent and you're not gonna like talking about you haven't stopped doing what you were doing a year ago right you're like you're in the same you're solving the same problem so as long as you're consistent on what you what you're doing all those people you know what we call the yellow audience that are not green yet and ready to move they are watching you they are watching you and then that that happens what you just said that happens to me frequently there's people that have taken this course because they couldn't work with me two years ago but they kept looking and when they saw the course they said like wait a minute I'm interested in that. So that's, the, that's what's happening to you now. They might have not understood the message a year ago. And as you clarify the message, as you hone in your audience, as you found your people and you, start, and you kept sharing it in a consistent, when I say consistent, I'm not talking about frequency because I don't post frequent either. I post when, when it's meant to be, like you're saying. Um, but what I said consistency is like, not that you were doing one kind of work and then you're doing another one you're in the same line that's what i meant about consistency they're like oh diana is still doing that and look at this group and look at the things that they're doing and oh my god those groups look amazing and look at the i i love your videos with the fire and all that so it's like that looks amazing i want that and that's now it the the tables are turned and they're reaching out to you because you have kept that same line. It does a completely different message. I was talking to my current group, uh, the marketing class was yesterday, and I was like, give things enough time to develop and keep consistent. Don't change your, your message here and there. Don't get outside of the problem that you solve because then people start perceiving you as wishy-washy, like you're trying new things all the time. But Diana is the same Diana that a year ago. It's just that Diana is, uh, uh, you know in her own evolution of the things that she's doing and she's being more open about sharing it because she knows now there are women that want to need this right so you you're not apologizing for it anymore you're just you're just going this is what i'm doing and if you're in it give me a call and let's connect right so i love it diana i know that you have achieved so much success and you're going to be even more successful in new jersey we wish you the best and these these Facebook groups, no, no, no geographical barrier. And I go to New Jersey frequently because my husband is from there. So when I go there, I want to see you and I want to visit you. Uh, yeah, my, we go pretty much every year because all his friends are there and he's from there. He grew up there. So, um, so I, have a, I, I was glad that you said New Jersey and not like Wisconsin or something. So <laughs> I, will, I will see you. I will see you there. And I want to give um, the opportunities to share also to, I don't know who it is, 786-340 number from Miami. Is it Bimari? Hi, it's Bimari. <laughs> yeah. Ah, How are you? I'm worried. I figured <laughs> I can see your phone, but I can see you. Okay. Yeah, because I, 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 uh, I dialed in with my phone on my computer. So um, I, I really don't have a lot to share because I feel like I've been going the last few months like like, like crazy with, um, 
you know, I'm split in a lot of different ways. So with my um, city work and then 